Hi, Gabriel. Let's take a look at this latest set of essays from you. This one is about online communication. Um, okay, let's see what you wrote. Experts throughout both the developing and developed world have debated the impact the pandemic had in workplaces. The issue of remote work has become a trending topic, especially the question of whether it is beneficial or detrimental in comparison with face-to-face -face dynamics. This essay will discuss the advantages and disadvantages of this issue using examples from the UK government and Oxford University to demonstrate points and prove arguments. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's look at this topic um, again. It says, in many workplaces, online communication is now more common than face-to-face -face meetings. Do the advantages outweigh the disadvantages? So you kind of addressed this, but not entirely. I felt like you took this topic and you made it exclusively about remote work. But this isn't just about remote work. It's about um, online communication. So online communication happens at the workplace as well. So, for example, um, in, in my office, I send emails all day long to people who work in the same institution as me, but they, um, you know, it's just to have like a written record or, you know, we have Zoom meetings because we're in different parts of the organization. So that's not remote work, but that is online communication. Okay, just to give you an example. So you got a little too specific here and you took it in a different direction than you needed to. Uh, they were talking just about online communication. So this stuff that I'm talking about, uh, emails, um, you know, uh, like video conferences, um, you know, maybe, maybe things like chat boxes in some sort of system. So all of this to communicate with colleagues or partners or clients, what have you, uh, rather than meeting them face to face. Whereas remote work is something rather different. That's working, you know, from your home or maybe not from your home, just somewhere that's not the office place. So uh, the office. <laughs> so that's uh, what you need to be careful about here. That was one thing. The second thing you need to be careful about here is that there is a direct question here. You see, every IELTS essay has a question or it has a command that it wants you to answer. And it's really in your best interest to answer this question in your introduction. The reason for that is if you look at the band descriptors under task achievement, under band seven, it says presents a clear position throughout the response. Throughout means from the beginning to the end. So for your position to be clear from the beginning, it's really a good idea to include it in your introduction. So what that means, the, the, the short answer to this is that you should answer this question in introduction. Don't just say that you're going to address advantages and disadvantages like you did, but actually answer the question if the advantages um, are greater than the disadvantages, okay? All right, so let's move on. On the one hand, there is ample evidence that remote work has represented an advance in the way of working. The central reason behind this is multiple to begin with, that's a little strange. The central reason is multiple. I know that in the template you've learned that a good way to express this is the central reason behind this is twofold. That works better than multiple because you don't really say the central reason is multiple or there is a multiple central reason. It just sounds awkward. So I would, um, I would change this around. Um, how could you change this? The central reason behind this is um, complex. You could say that if that's what you're trying to express, but let's actually see how you developed this to then determine what the best expression here would be. All right, so to begin with, it allows people to spend less time commuting to work, gaining valuable spare time. Hence, it provides the chance to freely work from new places that might have, that might have a positive emotional outcome for the worker. Moreover, it must be taken into account the positive, the positive effect that the reduction of mobility has on the environment. For example, recent studies about the UK government established that nearly 65% of workers gain an average of 1.5 extra hours per day. 
It also helped to reduce the length of meetings by 15%. Hence, the study also highlighted that a remarkable reduction of CO2 emissions was registered during the first part of the lockdown. Okay. Therefore, it is conclusively clear that allowing workers to do their jobs remotely has several benefits, both for the environment and for themselves. Okay. Um, you probably sensed my hesitation, not because of the grammar, not because of the vocabulary. All that was very well controlled. It was excellent. It was precise. All that was good. My concern was a little bit about the um, order of your ideas. So, let's see. Here you talked about the positive effect that the reduction of mobility has had on the environment. For me, the most logical thing to do would be to put this sentence directly... Hang on a second. Okay. To put this sentence direct... I can't highlight for some reason. I apologize. There we go. So I would have put this sentence directly after that. Okay, because that's where you're actually talking about the environment. Okay, and then this thing about here, uh, gain an average of 1.5 hours a day. Um, it reduced the length of meetings. Okay, maybe you could have included that with the positive kind of outlook that it provides workers. Because that seems to be one of the things you were saying. So... Uh, the central reason behind this is, let's keep that word for the moment, uh, complex, complex to begin with. Um, and rather than saying less time commuting to work, why don't we make it more general to kind of combine all these things that we were talking about? So the central reason behind this is, is complex. To begin with, it uh, leads to overall better worker well-being. Okay, and then you can talk about all these ways uh, that it does that. So you could say that it allows them to work freely, um, and then you could say that they gained an hour and a half per day. Um, it reduced the length of meetings. All of this had a positive outcome for the worker. So you could just kind of do all of that, and then you can talk about how it had a positive um, outcome for the environment. So I think doing that would be better. Generally, logically, it makes more sense to support um, the idea directly after the idea rather than kind of placing it somewhere else in the paragraph. Okay, so that's what I would have changed. Okay, let's see. So that's a little bit of coherence and cohesion there. Let's see. On the other hand, it should be acknowledged that there are some disadvantages of this new trend. This is mostly because there is less connection um, among coworkers online than face to face. Additionally, okay, can you explain this here? There's less connection. So explain it, go into a little more detail. Additionally, there has to be recognized, and that's a little awkward, that some work tasks are not possible to do remotely. For example, an extensive study by Oxford University showed that nearly 35% of the jobs were not possible to do remotely. Careful with this. We'll talk about this. Thus, it is possible to state that although the possibility to do remote work is not accessible to, for everyone, there are still benefits to be gained. Okay, so I definitely had a problem with this paragraph, Gabriel. Um, let's talk about it. First of all, this was okay about the connection, but you never actually developed this. So, I mean, what you wrote was good. There's less connection, sure, because they're only seeing each other on a screen and they're not, um, you know, maybe engaging in some small talk prior to or after the meeting, you know, over by the, the coffee maker or the water cooler and, you know, engaging in some light banter. So you should have developed that a little bit more. And then this here, the, the whole rest of this portion here, this wasn't on topic because remember, this essay is not about remote work, but it's about online communication. Okay, so this for me, this section that I've highlighted was off topic. Okay, and then of course, this sentence didn't really make sense because what this sentence here is supposed to be doing is it's supposed to link us back 
to that first sentence in your paragraph where you've said that there are some disadvantages. So what you needed to do here was just reiterate that there are disadvantages. Thus, it is possible to state that online meetings are not without their problems, okay? Or that online communication comes with some downsides for the worker. That's it, okay? But this was incorrect. It was incorrect to say that there were benefits to be gained because that's not remotely what this paragraph was about, okay? Let's see. So, uh, from the arguments and examples given, I firmly believe that the advantages of online communication outweigh the disadvantages presented. It is predicted that due to the remarkable advantages of online communication, remote work will increasingly grow in importance in the future. All right. Grammatically, lexically, it's very nice. I don't love that you have here advantages and then you have advantages yet again. I think you could have used something else, the positives, the benefits, an another word, okay? Because you have advantages and you have disadvantages and you have advantages. So you should have used another word there. Um, so for me, the, there are a couple of problems here in this essay today. They all focus on, uh, task achievement and then to some degree on coherence and cohesion. So coherence and cohesion is where one of the things they're checking is to see how logically your ideas are, are joined and how logically they're kind of put together. Okay, if they go from point A to point B to point C, or if they kind of jump around the alphabet. So that was one thing. And then, of course, there were the other issues about development and about being on topic, because this wasn't entirely on topic. Okay, um, the good news here, though, is that your grammar is on point, your vocabulary is very good. So all of that is um, very, 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 very positive. Now let's take a look at this popularity of school subjects in Germany. This is a tricky one for a lot of students because it just has very little information. So let's see what you did. You know what? I want to do something here. Can I do it? Let me see. No, I don't think I can. Oh, well, that's fine. Let's see. The pie, chart, uh, the pie chart presents the popularity of different school classes in Germany during 2017. But it's not. Okay, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. The data are shown in percentages of students' preferences within the subjects of physics, math, geography, PE, history, IT, and biology. Fine. Overall, as a general tendency, can be seen a balance between four main subjects with similar percentages of preferences. Okay. Grammar here is a little bit of a problem. As a general tendency, a balance among four main subjects with similar preference percentages of preferences can be seen. Well, that's a little bit of an improvement. At least the the syntax of it is a little more appropriate. But I still would have changed it to uh, to something else. Um, this, if you want to keep the same idea, you could have expressed it differently. You could have said, overall, as a general tendency, uh, four subjects uh, held the majority of popularity. Okay, how about overall, uh, four subjects accounted for the vast majority of popularity um, in Germany. So that's another way of saying this, okay? All right, let's move on. To begin with, it can be highlighted that there are four main subjects that, as a group, are covering up to 80% of the total preferences. Well, careful with your grammar here. I don't agree with this use of the present continuous. This isn't something developing. This isn't something, you know, happening at the time, happening at the time of speaking. So it's the wrong tense. You could have used the present simple. Um, that would have been okay. Or you could have used the past simple because this is 2017. Um, regardless of which one you use, uh, it's just important to be consistent here. It would be okay, even though this occurred several years ago, it would be okay to use the present tense as long as you're consistent with that use. Okay? So, to begin with, it can be highlighted that there are four main subjects that, as a group, cover up to 80% of the total preferences. The subject PE stands out as the first option with more than 22.9% of the students. It is closely followed by history with 22.4. Additionally, maths and physics are part of this group 
with 19.5 and 18.1 respectively. Conversely, classes such as biology, geography, and IT presented less than 10% each, full stop. Notably, the subject of IT is the least chosen matter with just 3.7. To summarize, it can be said that German the German educational system has shown, not has, but showed a balanced student distribution during 2017. Okay, now you didn't need a conclusion here. You opted for one, but you didn't need it. You already had an overview. So um, there was no real reason to include this other than perhaps wanting to increase your word count. You may or may not know that there is no word count minimum as there used to be. There is no 150 word minimum anymore. Um, so this didn't really help you in any particular way. If it were up to me, I would have suggested leaving this sentence out since, as I said, it didn't really add anything to this. And instead, I would have possibly done some more interesting things with the data in the actual chart. I thought that you did a lovely job of, again, vocabulary, grammar. The language you used was lovely, but your treatment of the data for me, left a little to be desired. Um, you essentially just went down the row. You know, you started 22.9, 22.4, 19.5, 18.1, and then, um, you know, you, you just kind of talked about these very briefly. So I thought you could have done more with this, especially if you were hoping to get um, a, a very high score here. So rather than just telling me, I like what you did with the 80%. That was very good but you could have made some comparisons. So let me give you an example. Um, rather than this last sentence about the German educational system, et cetera, et cetera, what would have been really interesting is if you had taken perhaps that smallest figure, IT, and then maybe compared it with the largest figure, PE. So you could have said something like, um, uh, in conclusion, the uh, highest subject or the subject with the highest popularity was seven times uh, more popular than the least popular. Okay? Or um, the two least popular subjects in Germany um, accounted for about 10% of student preferences. So there were a handful of things you could have done. Um, so, yes, I liked this, but the rest of it was just kind of like going down the row without really analyzing. And that's what for me was missing. Um, let's see. Okay, fantastic. I just realized that I skipped geography. So forgive me about that when I was talking about 10%, etc, etc. et cetera. But you could have talked about IT in comparison to PE, as I said before. Or when you were talking about these three, you could have also mentioned that IT was, um, you know, a little over half of the next most popular subject, geography. So these are the kinds of connections you want to make, especially when you have a chart like this it has very little information. I personally find that the ones with very little information um, are pretty much as challenging as the ones with like tons of information. Um, because what you need to do in these is you need to stretch out the data in order to make it meaningful, relevant, to show comparisons, to show connections. That's what needs to be done in something like this, okay? So I hope that information is helpful. I am looking forward to seeing your next set of essays, okay? And uh, I want to wish you good luck with them.